Oh, it's happening. Here he comes. Here he comes. Um, how's it going, everyone? Thanks for thanks for joining us on Cinco de Mezcal. Uh, I'm here. Oh, I heard Nora very excited. Hey, are you Let here? Me, can I just ask you one question before we get started, Aaron? What? Does your shirt not come with buttons? No, I, I'm slowly gonna uh, open it up throughout this entire experience with the public. You remind I'm celebrating me Bert, Cinco de Mezcal. You remind me of Burt Reynolds in the '70s. Thank you, thank you. That's that's a that's a huge compliment. Just, just put your collar up too. Hey, where are you? I'm at my home. I'm I'm at my bar. This is my bar here. Okay. And my kitchen in the background. You'll probably see Robin walking through at some point. Nice. Um, should we should we start should we start drinking should we raise a glass to uh, to all these beautiful people tuning in? Oh, did I lose you? Oh, you know what? I think I lost him. I think I I think I lost Brian. Oh no. What happened to him? Brian, where'd you go, dude? Um, well, you know, it's all right. Uh, there he is. I'm gonna add him. Is it working? Oh, there. <laughs> there you are. I was trapped in the Instagram bubble. Um, Hey man, so what are you making? So I'm gonna make a couple different uh, cocktails. Uh -huh. uh, talking. Um, one is called the Cranstonian. Oh wow, the Cranstonian, classic. If I may. And the other one is called, uh, it takes dose to tango. Oh, wow. Which is, uh, I'm very excited. Yeah. I'm very excited. I want you to go first. Okay, okay. Now, uh, well, first thing, I got everything out here, so I don't take too much time. Hello, everybody. Thanks for, for joining us for uh, Cinco de Mezcal. And uh, so first, obviously, it's always important to use tongs when you're dealing with ice correctly, right? So never use your hands. <laughs> You know, it's good. It, yeah, it's all about being precautious. It is. It is. So yeah. uh, we start with, this is just for one cocktail. Let's say you're drinking alone. So you have uh, one ounce of Dos Hombres. Uh, I have a little apple there. One ounce of apple. And it goes... We're doing one ounce of cranberry juice. Okay. Yeah, that's where the Cranstonian comes Oh, classic. Right, and then, uh, I, and oh, very important. We're gonna do at least a half ounce of fresh lime juice. Okay. All right. It's very important to have fresh lime juice. Yeah, I, I squeezed it already because squeezing lime juice is, is kind of boring. Yeah. Talk amongst yourselves while I make You look good. Better. You look good when you do that. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Please be stuck. I know. That always happens. Remember when we were at Tails in... Oh, Northern my God. Area? Yeah, we were at... Yeah, it's long story. But, yeah, I just okay, could, so not, what, could not figure uh, it out. What this one calls for is... Uh, I want to dip the rim a little bit in a little water. Okay. Nice little... And then I want to... Nice little rim job there, there, yeah. A little uh, spicy lime uh, salt for the uh -huh. rim. Not too much. All right. Everybody can put their own amount in. And I just use uh, chili lime. 
I like okay. chili lime from Trader Joe's. It doesn't have to be expensive. You can. This is really yeah. good stuff. You just pop it in and dip. Okay. So now I just pour the whole ingredients uh, over over this. Um, well, I'm, I should put some. Uh, yeah, put some ice. Yeah. I just do this. I'm going to pour the whole thing in. There you go. Try not to hit my my salted rim there. Look how pretty that is. Let's see. Oh, gorgeous. My little little lime on the corner there. Look at that. Yes. All right, that's the uh, this is what we what we call what is it, what was I call this? Uh, yeah, this Cranstonian. Is the Cranstonian. Yeah. Well, look, you, 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 you enjoy that. I'm going to make mine. Mine's super simple, and then we'll go into your second drink. Uh, mine's, oh, mine's very basic. One second. We would expect basic from you, sir. Oh, yeah, there's that. Can you see that? Can you see this? Am I, is it out of uh, frame? I guess we squeezed a little bit. So that's that. <laughs> And I just put it in your hand. All right, so this is a super classic, classic cocktail. It's just dos hombres um, on, uh, on the rocks. And this is how I choose to drink my, my mezcal most of the time. Very simple, very easy. Um, and that's it. So it's just dos hombres with the little, uh, the little ice. Cheers. Okay. Uh, okay. That's overly simple. Well, yeah, but not, you know, we not everyone has to be like overly dramatic so, and you know try thanks, to impress. Thanks for going out of your way to present cocktails for. I'm friend. sorry. I I'm happy to drink simple cocktails. Yeah. Yeah. But this is kind of You're a, over there wearing a Dos Hombres shirt, doing your fancy cocktails, naming it after yourself, the Cranstonian. Okay. All right. All right. Look, okay. look, this is this is Dos Hombres Mezcal on the rocks. Super easy, super smooth, classic, classy. All right. Yeah, enough. And that's of that. it. It's super easy. You can get ice really anywhere. You can make it yourself. Um yeah, you done large it. ice cubes, small, crushed You're about things, these snow cone ice cubes. Yeah, I made I made these ice cubes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you didn't you didn't hurt yourself thinking about that. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let's All see right. your next. Let's this see your next cocktail. Called, it takes dose to tango. <laughs> okay. Let's see it. All right. All right. So obviously. We start, and again, it's just a single drink. You might want to double this if you have a guest or a partner or whatever. So I just go with one ounce of hombres, one ounce of Cointreau. All right. And an ounce of guava nectar, not guava, mango, mango mm. nectar, or mango syrup. And this is, you know, you, you do it to taste. If you like it a lot, you put a little a d dash more in. If not. And then the last thing is um, a little, a little agave nectar, which I just, you know, just a little bit, not a lot, and put it in, sticking with our our native plant, right? All right, that's that. Hey, Aaron, while I'm yeah. this, why don't you shake your cocktail? Hey, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be showing you guys a great cocktail in a little bit. All right. Same thing. I'm going to take uh, another glass here since I can get this up. Take another glass. This time, uh, with the takes dose to tango, I'm going to put it in a little bit of lime sugar mm. as, the, as the crust. 
So this is, you know, if, if people like it lean and a little sweet, they can do that, or they can go back to the salt. Anything's fair. Whatever your taste is, is your taste, and we support that. All right, so here we go. I'm going to pour this in now. Uh, the mango. Nice little thing. Okay, here's, it takes dos to, man to tango. The mango tango. Click. Click. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Did you already drink your other one? No, that's right here. Mm. So I have uh, Classic double fisting. Oh my God, I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> Um, that's only on weekends, you know that. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a little more uh, summery, refreshing. So as we get into summer, you might want to consider that. Always with the fresh lime juice. Um, and you can do either the salt or the sugar. This one is great right now. A little cranberry uh, juice cocktail with the, with a little uh, Aperol and, of course, those. Um, cheers to you. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Um, thank you, everyone, for, for tuning in. Uh, we're, we're so excited to, uh, to get together and finally be able to sort of tell you how, uh, how this came to be. Um, and slowly but surely, we're, uh, we're inching our way across the states and then um, over the seas and uh, hopefully will be um, in your neighborhood soon enough. But um, anyways, uh, Brian, Brian and I uh, obviously got to know each other very well during Breaking Bad. And um, quickly, he became just one of my dear friends. Um, and uh, over, the, over the years became my, my mentor. And um, believe it or not, uh, Brian is definitely my, my, my mentor. I really look up to the man. Uh, I say this all the time. Um, he's the most professional person I've ever met slash, slash, uh, immature person I've ever met. Um, hands down. Uh, but I say that in a good way. It's a great combination to have someone that you really respect, admire, but there's someone that's not afraid to just joke around and not take himself too seriously. So I really learned a lot um, from this man on the set of Breaking Bad, on screen and off. Um, but uh, I love him. And so now I'm going to give Brian the opportunity to, uh, to talk about what he thinks about what he thinks about me. Well, let's just skip past that part and go right to the story of, uh, of how we got to uh, creating uh, the <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> no, that's not, hey, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's short and it's, it's not all that complimentary. <laughs> you can't say right, something right. nice about someone, don't say anything at all. Yeah, you know, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So cut to, cut to a few years after um, Breaking Bad was finished, Brian and I, um, obviously, it was still very close. We were having dinner. We were having sushi in New York. Um, and we were sitting next to each other and Brian mentioned, Hey, do you think it's, do you think it's too soon to maybe do a, a show together or, or a movie or maybe in a, even a play? Um, and this was far before even the conversations, uh, were starting with El Camino that we were re reunited, um, with the characters that we played in Breaking Bad. And so I said, you know, I think it's a little too soon. I think people are just going to see us as as Walt and Jesse for, for a little while longer. Maybe we could, um, you know, maybe produce a play or produce some sort of show, or maybe we could go into the booze business. And he laughed at me. I, I thought, like, well, this is an obvious sort of direction. He laughed, and I go, what do you think about Mezcal? And then he, and he pulled out a bottle of Dos Ombres and said, <laughs> I pulled out a bottle. So I've been working on this for a while. Uh, I go, what do you think about Mes Mescal? And he laughed at me again. And at the time, that was all I was drinking. But what did you think of Mescal when I brought it up? I, I thought you were crazy. Now, mm. being, 
I'm uh, I'm probably five or so years older than you, so I have uh, a little more history. And um, your dreams, yes. When I was in high school, we used to uh, chip in to uh, my buddies and I and, and get the oldest looking guy to go buy the booze. And we, we you know, here's a dollar seventy five. I have two and a quarter. I have, and we pull our money together and buy it the largest, cheapest bottle of booze, and that was often mezcal. Um, the problem is that we bought the cheapest mezcal, and you cannot do that. It's like buying cheap beer or cheap wine, or I mean, you, you taste the cheapness. So it was disgusting. It smelled like rubbing alcohol and tasted worse. So we used it only as a, as a punishment or a torture to someone, if someone, made a bad joke or someone did something stupid, they, we'd make them drink and you'd have to squeeze the mezcal. So my my association with mezcal was so negative because of that terrible experience when I was in high school. Uh, until I got over that and Aaron was able to convince me that it, it's a whole new world, that there are a myriad of, of agave uh, varietals that yeah. make so many. Some are wild, some are planted, some are farm, uh, and it, it ranges. I think there are like, a, I don't know, 150 different varietals of agave plants. And the, and so we went to a mezcal bar, we tasted some, I couldn't believe it. I, it was delicious. Some were too powerful for me. Yeah. Some were too smoky. Some, it, you know, I feel like Goldilocks. It, and, and so when we were talking about this, I said, well, you have a desire to have a burning sensation going down your 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 throat. I don't mind. I don't mind getting punched in the face uh, by a spirit in a good way. In a good way, Brian likes to be seduced, romance. Yeah. Um, you know, I do. Yeah. I, I like. I like all of my art to slowly introduce me to their world. So yeah. Whether it's architecture or painting or dance or music, I, I don't want to be taken aback by it. I want to taste something and then lean into it. Um, yeah. So that, that's my interest. God, you're a beautiful, beautiful man. Um, you know, I started drinking mezcal uh, about five, five years ago. So this journey for Brian and I started a little over three years ago. A friend uh, got me a mezcal cocktail. I couldn't... I couldn't uh, see what the spirit was i asked him i had never had mezcal before um and then i started exploring uh different ways of how to drink mezcal you can just you know we drink i drink it neat anything you can have tequila really or vodka and you could, or even bourbon really um i mean i make my old fashions with mezcal instead of bourbon super easy to make um and so i started substituting everything with mezcal um and now, cut to, here we are. Uh, but, uh, so we decided to just, just just run with it. And if we traveled out to Oaxaca and we didn't find the juice, the mezcal that we were searching for that both Brian and I fell in love with, then we wouldn't do it. We, we'd be okay to walk away from this. And we were okay to, uh, we were willing to, you know, continue to travel out to the beautiful, uh, beautiful Mexico, drive around the countryside, these beautiful mountains uh, um, all over Oaxaca. Um, I mean, it was, uh, it was an incredible journey. And so, um, but with all that said, we were willing to walk away if it wasn't perfect. And well, so, we knew that it was going to be a challenge to find something that was both in one drink, strong enough to suit Aaron's taste and smooth enough and inviting enough to suit my taste. Yeah. And we, we tasted, I don't know, somewhere like 60 to 70 different mezcals while we're down. But uh, at least, yeah. The first thing was the nose. If we uh, took a, a smell of it and we didn't like the smell, we didn't even bother drinking it. So yeah. we eliminated all those because we think it's the whole thing. You have to enjoy the scent and then and then just let it touch your lips a little bit and then touch it pure 
Yeah. That's what happened. The very last day of our week long trip there, we were at a little village called San Luis del Rio, which is about three hours outside of Oaxaca City on a really rather rural highway for two hours and then a dirt road going up to a hill uh, and into this little village uh, for an hour. And we discovered uh, our juice there by a, a wonderful mescalero named Gregorio. And it was quite by accident. Now, this little village has only 450 people in it. Yeah. There is one landline in the entire village. There is no cell service at all. In fact, at our Palenque, which is the production center of where, where Gregorio makes those hombres, there is no electricity. The only thing they do have, uh, which we help them with, is to, to get solar power panels to be able to charge up and have some lights on that allows them to process the, the, the juice in the winter months a little longer throughout the day. Um, but other than that, everything there is artisanal, which means by law, that none of the production of Los Hombres is connected to modern technology. Yeah. And that's actually, um, you know, why we have uh, the donkeys. They're, they're a pivotal part in making our, uh, our mezcal. They, they, help, they help pound our, our cooked mezcal into just this just mush. Um, it's just a part of the process of cooking our mezcal. But... Um, you know, we weren't even supposed to uh, see this particular blanket. We were, we were on our way out of this village that we, we trekked to. Beautiful village, beautiful community. Um, but on our way out, uh, someone came running up to us and said, look, there's, there's one more blanket if you want to take a look. It's a bit of a trek. Um, you have to take off your boots, hike up your pants, and hike through a river and go go down a hiking trail for a little while and you know we'll stumble upon it and so we're like yeah let's uh let's do it and as we're doing this we see this thing coming up in the distance that no joke it really did it looked like a meth lab in the middle of a, a rainforest you know and i was just brought back home you know <laughs> Brian and it just felt it felt good the story felt good and i go please god let this mezcal taste good and uh we took it straight from the source i mean straight from the source we both smelt it and we looked at each other and we tasted it and we just we 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 couldn't speak to one another we looked and then we tasted it again and we're like oh my god i think this is it and so Bless Gregorio, our maestro. I mean, it's because of him and his creation um, that we're we're sitting here talking to all of you today um, with this. I mean, he he can track back five generations in his family um, uh, making mezcal, um, and he thinks it's probably even even further than that. Um, but he's been you know he's been learning the ropes since he was a, a, a little boy. I mean, I think he started really learning how to make mezcal when he was around eight years old. Um, and it's very typical, uh, it's tradition to sort of, once you hit age 50, you retire and that's it. And then it goes down to uh, the next generation. But um, I, I, I think I, I will do that when I get 50. I think I will retire and move Yeah, you, you, you plan on doing that? Yeah, I think when smart I- Smart move, I, smart move. It's a ways away, but, but I think when yeah, I... Yeah, we're all, we're all counting the days. You know, what was interesting, you remember, Aaron, when we were there, um, in the, in the uh, distillation process, where this fermented mesh goes into these very hot copper stills, and the mm -hmm. vapor of which goes up in the tubes, down through a cooling trough, yeah. And then dripping out into the tent. And that's where, when it came dripping out, is when we tasted it. The one thing that, that really fascinated us, uh, Gregorio would take 
a little half cup and he he let it drip in there what was just made and then he'd take a straw and he would blow he would blow bubbles into the freshly made mezcal yeah and the coagulation and the size of the bubbles gave him an indication of the of the alcohol content yeah that's amazing. So it's like if you took a bottle of mezcal and shook it up, and then look at the top, you'll see you'll see bubbles forming, and that's how. And then he would look at the bubbles, and he was so accurate because ours is uh, forty-two percent alcohol by volume, and that's the target that he needs to have. But in the field, that's the. The way they test it, there's no modern equipment. He blows it, he takes a look at the bubbles, and he can determine within a fraction of a percent where that alcohol level is. And of course, it's tested later on before it's bottled. Uh, but it's it's just amazing how, how knowledgeable they are on it. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's such a blessing that we stumbled upon him because we were, you know, again, willing to walk away from this. Um, but cut to, we found this juice, and we thought that this this could be it, and um, and we invited all of our friends and family uh, to do blind taste tests to see what what uh, rose to the top, and this always this beautiful beautiful thing just always seemed to rise to the top. And so we decided to to run with it, and here we are. So um, I really I know a lot of you out there have have been able to pick up a bottle and we appreciate you. Thank you so much for supporting this. Um, I know a lot of you are, are dying to try to pick up a bottle in your local liquor store or markets. Um, again, we're slowly making our way up. This is a grassroots operation, you know, really just, it was just Brian and I, and we brought in our other partner, Michael. Um, it was literally just us three pounding the pavement for, for years to get this thing Get this thing out. Um, you know, we are, are blessed to be with uh, with Southern, um, who is the, the biggest liquor distributor out here in the States. And um, so they are, you know, each and every one over there, they're really pounding the pavement, helping get our product out there. Again, we're a small operation. You know, it's, a, it's small batches that we're slowly growing. And so hopefully eventually, you know, um, those batches will get bigger and bigger and bigger, and we'll be able to provide for the, the rest of the globe. But um, in, in this world of, of our current coronavirus quarantining, uh, none of this is important. Uh, that's the yeah. first thing we want to say is we hope that you're well and healthy and that your families are well and healthy and stay safe. Um, we wanted to do this. We, we debated doing this because we didn't want to seem like we're celebrating in, in light of all of the people who are suffering. And yet we thought they're, we're human beings and we need to look at, at the silver lining in things. And we need to be able to celebrate certain things and appreciate our good fortune uh, in, in good health. And we hope that's, that's where you are as well. Um, it, we, we are, um, we've donated, this is the, the last day I think you can purchase online and we donate a hundred percent of our proceeds yeah. today, the last day to three great organizations. One is the America's food bank. Uh, one helps, uh, bartenders emergency fund. And the other is for the other hospitality workers, um, dishwashers, bus boys, waiters, waitresses, hostesses. Uh, and so they will need money to, to just buy groceries. And that's, that's what all this is about. So if you don't have one, go online, uh, go to dosombres.com, pick up a bottle of Dos Hombres and know that 100% of the profit goes to there. And uh, we're fortunate because... In, in an odd way, um, this off-premise um, world where we're buying, if people are buying it from online or um, BevMo on the West Coast, Total Wine and Spirits, ABC Wine down in Florida. It's just, I mean, great partners with us. And um, 
we've done really well. So we, it's, it's time to give back. We want to make sure that we help those people who are on the front line of this. And it's, it's unknown when any of those people are going to be able to get back to work. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just such a crazy time. I mean, I really don't even know how to, uh, articulate it in a proper way, but, uh, just know, you know, we're all in this together. I, I, I raise a glass to all of you. I know it's just such a, a uncertain time here and, um, we will get through this. Uh, yeah, we will get through this and we just, um, just stand together, stay safe, stay sane. Um, but yeah. In looking at the uh, some of the notes and messages that are coming through, I saw one that said, I love you so much from Adrian, I believe it was. And I appreciate that, Adrian. But don't forget, Aaron is also here. <laughs> Show him a little uh, courtesy, if you would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, someone asked, are, are we still selling meth? Um, actually, no, we're not. Uh, Oh wait, that's this is news to me. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, we're not we're not selling meth anymore. Uh, good to know. We've been there. We've done that. Uh, we've now moved on to mezcal. So um, yeah, who knows what's next? You know, who knows? Oh, there it is. Someone said, "I I love you, Aaron." That's sweet. I know. Oh, I know. thank you. Love you back. Oh, hey Norway. Norway. I see you. Aaron hey too. Norway. God, I love Norway. Uh, we're getting people from, I saw it was from Colombia and from Brazil and uh, just all over. It's, it's mm. really great. Oh, all is right. the pizza still on the roof? You know what? <laughs> <laughs> as far as I know. As far as, yeah. Uh, bless that beautiful couple and the people that own the White House. Uh, people would drive by their house and throw pizzas on the roof. It's just... It's not a nice thing to do, you know. Talking about um, is is Dos Funny, Hombres. Funny, but Is Dos Hombres available in Mexico? And we're working on it. As as you might have guessed, you know, it's uh, dealing with an alcoholic product uh, is not like anything else because of all the restrictions that come along with it. So every state in the United States has their own uh, criteria for what's accepted and what's not. Um, and so too with every single country. So what we've been focusing on, uh, we haven't even, we're not even a year old, is to be able to, you know, really focus on North America um, at first and get well established there and then expand out. We're soon going to be in, I know, in Europe, coming very soon. I don't know if we can announce that, but we'll, we'll make an announcement on that as soon as yeah. we can. Um, and Mexico is the same. We're, we're working very closely. And we think uh, within a few weeks that we will be available in Mexico. And, um, and also, you know, I want to say, to be honest, um, this was my reintroduction to Mezcal. And there are so many beautiful Mezcals out there. So if you start to enjoy Dos Hombres, you may want to also experiment with other kinds of mezcals. It's a big tent. We hope you enjoy ours, but also it's we're we're just scratching the surface. Of, yeah. Of the, the amount of great uh, mezcals that are out there on the market. Some are very hard to find. Some are very expensive. Now, for example, our mezcal is an Espinosa. And the Espinin plant takes six years to, to come to maturity before it can be harvested. There are some uh, plants that could be 25 or 30 years before that plant is mature enough to be harvested and made into a mezcal. So it's very weather dependent, um, rain dependent, and sun and how much and how much it, yeah. and time. It's really. It's really a, a very dependent on agricultural um, situations. Can we talk about our our uh, our future project that we're working on right now? Yeah. Speaking of Mezcal, um, 
Well, we're working on a, a Topola that uh, will be coming out during the holidays, a very limited uh, number um, of bottles, but uh, our, our Topola, it, uh, we harvest the agave at 25 years old. Um, so it's a much different uh, sort of process um, from our, uh, our espadine, but uh, we're just designing the bottle now, I think, uh, the next steps are just uh, kind of getting every, you know, the label and everything approved. Um, but yeah, it will be out on the market soon enough. But again, what Brian was saying to go back, we are really trying very hard to get this on the shelves in Mexico, where it came from. We're so proud to be working with the, the Mexican community out there. I just, each time I go out there, I just fall in love uh, with the people and the community and the, the surroundings over and over and over again. Um, and once this pandemic that the globe is going through, once this is all behind us and we're able to travel again, my God, what a luxury it is. What a luxury it is to just go outside of your, your house or your apartment um, and be with your friends. Uh, what a blessing. So I, I can't wait to get back out to, uh, you know, cross the border and be with the, the beautiful community of Oaxaca and uh, raise a glass with all of them. And, um, you know, yeah. what's really interesting is uh, uh, here's two American guys, you know, have some celebrity or fame and, and we're on this quest to, to find this juice if we can. Uh, and, and, you know, there have been less um, altruistic people who have gone down there to try to rape the country and, and just take for themselves. Uh, you know, we're, we're, it's, it's, a, it's a sad situation. What was really, really wonderful and a, and a, a great experience for us is that two American guys going down to Oaxaca, going into the foothills, three hours away from the, the, the largest town. And we meet Gregorio. Mm. And before we were able to do any business with him, he insisted on us sitting down for a meal. Yeah. With himself, his wife, and his kids. And just to get to know us through our broken Spanish and his broken English and an interpreter and, and connecting the dots. And we had a meal in his very humble abode. Uh, and all of us there just exhaled and relaxed and said, you know what? This is the way it should be. He did not want to do business with us unless he felt connected to us, unless he felt that we could be um, trusted and, and friends. Whereas it's so un-American. Americans, we don't, you know, as a in general, you don't even have to like the person you're doing business with. Just do business. But that's not the way it is with, with the Latin people. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So we all relaxed. We all talked about families, our families, his families, children, um, our hopes, and then, and then yeah. it was time to discover if, if there was a possibility to to have Gregorio uh, become our maestro. Uh, and it was a great lesson for me. I, I really thought, boy, this is really how it should be. And I, I really embraced that, that culture and the way they need to feel comfortable and trusted uh, of other people before they do business. Yeah, I feel very blessed to have stumbled upon uh, that village and that family. Um, yeah, and without them, obviously, we this this uh, this growing business would not exist. Um, no, and uh, this is just the beginning. Again, you know, we're not a year old, and uh, we have big plans, um, big plans in giving back to uh, uh, the beautiful people of Oaxaca. Um, and that's what it's all about. Um, so yeah, that's what it's all about. But um, anyways, I'm just so happy that we were able to kind of finally get together and tell the story of Dos Hombres and, and how, it can, 
how it came to be and why it came to be. Um, but thank you so much for, for tuning in and, uh, and joining us on this, uh, this conversation. Here, uh, before we go, I just wanted to say that we're, we're busy constantly talking about how we can get our, our fans and, and lovers of Mezcal to, to be a part of this. And we're trying to figure out a way to, to conduct a, con a, a contest to be able to bring someone or t two or four people down with us to Oaxaca at some point. But yeah. It's really tricky yeah, come see the operation with us. Yeah. And to see it firsthand, to see how rural it is and see how intuitive it is for Gregorio and how he feels it. For example, when the, when the vapor, when the liquid comes out of the spouse and into the big plastic jug, the first version, unfiltered, of Mezcal, he constantly looks at, at the flow of it. And I asked him once, why, why are you checking the spouts so much? And he said, if the, if the juice comes out and it just drips, it means the fire under the copper kettle is not hot enough. And he'll put another log in there to get it just to the right temperature. If it's coming out too fast, he'll pull a log out to cool down the fire a little bit. That's, I mean, I was, it was a marvel to look at that and go, wow. He just is constantly checking every aspect of it. He'll go to the fermentation barrels and he'll stick his fingers in there and, and give it a smell to see how long. Usually it lasts 10 days fermentation in these oak barrels. But he can sense if it's, if it's hotter during the day, it may take less time. If it's cooler, yeah. temperature may take more time. It's just, he's an amazing farmer and, and, a, and a physician, really. Yeah, ways. yeah. I mean, and I got to tell you, the, uh, his palenka was so pristine. And I mean, it was in the middle of nowhere. And yes, from afar, it, it looked like a meth lab in the middle of a rainforest. But when you get up close, you're like, oh, it's, it's actually a clean workstation. You know, it, it, it was a beautiful sort of process. But Brian, I mean, we might as well talk about it. Brian, before he got, I got there a, a day or too early and I, I went a, a full day of tastings and grabbed samples from different places for him to taste that I thought were, you know, somewhat interesting. And uh, there was this vat of mezcal that I sampled that they- Not, not at our not Not at our place. No, 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 this was, this was, you know, six, seven days before we even stumbled upon our place. But they took off this tarp and you see this mezcal fermenting and there's just, millions of gnats flying all over the place, you know? And then they just stick a cup into the vat and then they hand it to me. And you know, this is my day, this is day one. I go, okay, Oaxaca, I mean, they really, you know, they go for it here, you know? It's just like, gloves are <laughs> off, let's taste it. I, I guess, let's taste it, you know? And I taste it, it was, it was fine, but it just didn't feel all that sanitary, you know? Cut to, um, I got deathly ill. Um, all of us did, besides Brian. Uh, all of us got deathly ill, I think, from that first day of drinking the, uh, the hey, Nat, the Nat Mezcal. That, that might be uh, worth noting, that we uh, made sure that Gregorio and all his workers at the Dos Hombres Palenque are safe. We have water, hand washing stations and masks for all of them. Um, and anything that uh, Gregorio asked for, we just provided. Um, he is our producer and without him, we don't have yeah. a job. So, uh, maybe, maybe it's a good time. Do you have any questions? We'll take a look and see if there's, uh, and we'll answer a question or two about yeah. the skull or something, whatever you want. Uh, what type of wine are you sipping on? Uh, I mean, I like a good red, you know. Um, the white cab. Um, uh, here's one. Here's one that says, 
Uh, Brian, do you feel embarrassed that you're so much more handsome than Aaron Paul? No, you know, I, I get that all the time. And while I'm sensitive to it, I don't want yeah. to make Aaron feel less than. So I try to give him as much room as possible. Thanks for the question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. oh my god uh what else what else is there is it worth oh. seven dollars a bottle of mezcal uh well i don't know where you're buying it we're, we're not seventy dollars a bottle where are you buying that um, yeah they... it, it you know for all the reasons that we talked about by the way can you see it says um mezcal artisanal this is governed by the mexican government is that it is old fashioned, old world processing. And like I said, there's no electricity at our Palenque. If there was, if there was any modern technology used in the process of our mezcal, we could not say artisanal on the bottle. So for you, when you go to a liquor store or Total Wine or Bevmo or whatever, if you look at it and it says artisanal, you know that's what it means. It's old world, old ways. Um, the, the ingredients, the ingredients to make dos hombres is agave, espedín agave, and water. Yeah. That's it. So, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful mezcal. Um... Argentina, God, I love, I love, and I know you get it a lot, Brian. Um, I just love people from Argentina, you know? I just, every, anytime I meet someone from Argentina, I get so happy. Uh, and they, they just, they just sent our love. Uh, wait, how do you cry? My, how do you cry so well on TV, Aaron? Do you suffer during your childhood? Actually, I'm so happy finally someone brought that up, um, my suffering from my childhood. No, I don't know, you know, I don't know. No, I had a great childhood. I, I, love, I, love, my, I love my family, beautiful family, uh, siblings, tons of nieces and nephews. It's all, it's all good. I just, I guess, I guess at times I just like to be sad. There's someone asking about the first bath. Um, as you'll notice in every bottle of Dos Hombres, they're hand numbered. The batch number and the bottle number is uh, written by hand down in the Yeah, what are you? Uh, right now I have batch number five and this is bottle number 1358. I'm batch six, this is bottle 5826. Yeah. Um, each yeah. one is numbered. Um, it just so happens because this was uh, Aaron's idea. Uh, he has the very first bottle of the very first batch. Yes. Uh, and I have the, the second bottle of the very first batch. And Michael yes. has the third bottle of the very first batch. And then we'll never open that. I don't think I'll ever open that. You didn't? Oh, I already drank mine. You did? No. <laughs> No, it's in, it's in, yeah, no, it's in, uh, it's on my shelf in there. It's great. I have something to be proud of. We're proud of this. We're proud of uh, this product. We're proud to get it out to the market. And we're so proud that people are loving it. It really is a beautiful. Wow, look at that. Spirit. I think love from India. Oh, my God. India, so love. Um, by the way, um, the... Um, the ingredients and the way to make this cocktail, these two cocktails, the Cranstonian and the Takes Dose to Tango, will be on our website, uh, dosombres.com, as will uh, Aaron Paul's recipe of ice. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Some people like the simple things, you know? Not everyone has a cocktail shaker. Not everyone yeah. has a little jigger to measure out the ingredients. Not everyone has a fresh lime tree. But everyone soon can have a bottle of Dos Hombres. And they can make their own ice. 
You know what? Okay, you know what? what? I'm gonna put together a video, and I'm gonna post. I'm gonna post a video of me making a cocktail. When? I'll, I'm gonna post it after this thing. Okay. All right. Yeah. Make, make You'll see cocktail. it. But, yeah. And have more than one ingredient. Like no, 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 no. There's gonna be more. Ice is not an ingredient. So. And I'm not gonna name it after myself, the Cranstonian. Well, it's, it's cranberry juice. So cran. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice little. Okay. Oh, you saw that. Oh, it starts with the C. Oh, Cranstonian. I got it. I, the dripping jealousy is so apparent. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, Cranstonian. Uh, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a nice. You'll see. You'll see. It's gonna. It's, okay. All right. It's gonna be. It's gonna be really. It's gonna be By really way, special. Please uh, send us at dosombres.com uh, your recipe. What what Yeah. What, what, We'll be checking that out and, and seeing what new kind of recipes we can make. And we'll post them. Like if you if you have videos of you making a cocktail, um, show us what you're making, and uh, we'll we'll share it with the world. Um, there's a lot of ways to drink this juice, so uh, explore, experiment. Um, but yeah. Uh, any more questions? We could take another question. Uh, well, they said, yeah, we need more recipes. Yes, they're coming. Um, Sending love from England. Thank you. Uh, Papa getting old. <laughs> yes, yeah, science. Yes, yeah, science. Uh, wait, drip, drip and jealousy, Aaron. Name it. Huh? Yeah, there's always dripping jealousy. Uh, say my name, please. I don't know. It doesn't say. Uh, well, say my I, name. <laughs> um, oh, see, Argentina again. And yeah. Iran. Love Florida. Yes, we're in Florida. Yes, we are. We are in Florida. From Italy um, and Iran and India. India. Wow, there's Brazil, people all over the world. The Ukraine. Peru. Iraq. And Peru. Yeah. Um, we'll take another question or two, uh, but before we go, I wanted to mention again, if you go online, dosombres.com, and buy a bottle now, 100% uh, of the proceeds, just like they have for the last two weeks, 100% of the proceeds will go to three um, really valuable charities, the, uh, uh, the food, food pantry, um, the uh, bartenders' emergency fund and uh, the hospitality workers' emergency fund. Yes. Um, please do buy it now. Uh, thank you for that. It's a win-win. You know, you get a you get to drink some good booze, and also you're you're giving back to people in need. So, um, yeah, please support when you can. Um, right. And there was well, another message I had, but Aaron interrupted me, and I forgot what it was. What? What did you just say? Um, what was it? <laughs> Austria, Saudi Arabia, fantastic. Oh, I, I just think, listen, I don't want, we're having a lot of fun, but I keep thinking about all those people who are really hurting and really have lost their jobs or are, are ill from this virus. And we don't want to make light of that. It's, uh, you know, we, we want to do what we can to help help them. And so this little gesture that we've made so far is, is helping a lot. We have a big check to write for them. We're happy to do it. Um, and we'll take other suggestions. You know, So we, we do have uh, someone monitoring the incoming mail. And we, we do read everything. So please do give us suggestions as they come. But watch your language. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, yes, exactly. Um, it's a wild time we are in, my good God. Uh, Is there going to be another El Camino? Is there going to be a follow-up 
to El Camino. I just read that question. Aaron, do you know um, Yeah, we shot it. It should be coming out sometime next year. No, there's, I, I know we're, uh, I think that was it. You know, I think El Camino was the, uh, the send off of, um, of Pinkman. Uh, there may be another uh, Breaking Bad story. Who knows? I don't know. You really? Know. What have you heard? No, I'm just saying there's a there's a Breaking Bad universe out there. You know, there's there's Breaking Bad. There's Better Call Saul. There's El Camino. There's you know who knows? I mean, could could there be another story within that universe? Um, yeah, absolutely. Do I know <laughs> that's going to happen? No. Um, should it happen? I mean. I don't know. You know, you know. We we always get asked about Better Call Saul and whether whether Jesse or Walt are going to show up on that show. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know how many times we got to tell Vince we're ready to do it. Uh, you know, I just don't think he loves us anymore. I really. Don't I don't think he. he uh, you know, I don't think he wants us on the show. No, that's very yeah. clear. Yeah, it's very, very clear. But to be honest, I'm such a huge fan of Better Call Saul, and my good God, what what is happening? The last two seasons on that show. Wait, wait, don't say different. anything. Don't say anything. What do you mean? Don't say anything. Well, because I haven't seen season five. Yet. You huh, know, this, interesting. Right? I, interesting. I wrote, we were talking with Vince and, and Aaron, and I said... Uh, oh, yes, 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 yes. I said, uh, I can't find season five, and I didn't start it in time, and I'm not going to do season five, episode four, and go on. Um, so yeah. I, I need to start from the beginning, and I said to Vince, hey, can you send me some DVDs or something? And Aaron wrote back, he says, you cheap bastard, just go on to iTunes. iTunes, <laughs> yeah, you can get anything you want on iTunes. All right, yeah. that's what I'm but it's just so good. But I just don't see, you know, anyone that's a fan of, you know, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. And now, you know, El Camino, you know where, at least, you know, where Jesse went. I don't see how, uh, how uh, these characters could show up. We'll see. Who knows? We'll see. But if Vince, if Vince knocked on either of our doors, um, of course, we'd show up in a heartbeat. No, I'd say, "What the hell are you doing here? We're we're quarantining." <laughs> Don't knock on my door. What's wrong? Don't knock on my door. Stay home. Put a mask on. What are you doing? Um. Yeah. Uh, what else? You know, a lot of these, a uh, lot of people have been asking us to do video after video after video, right? And, uh, like saying hello to the first line workers. And so I've done about 22 or 23 videos for frontline workers, for EMTs, for um, graduates in, in uh, just every charity you can imagine. And um, I have one little thing I did. I, I'm gonna show you a little bit that when they said that you really should you really, you really need to cover half of your face in order to yeah. spread the virus. I thought, well, okay, I'll, I'll cover half of my face. And so, Jesus, uh, you don't appreciate it. I mean, you know, I'm covering <laughs> half of my face. Now, yeah. Hey, you know what? That that mask looks. That mask looks familiar. It should look familiar. Yeah, that you mask looks. That mask looks very familiar. Yeah. I think I'm uh, very eager. Yes. You look. You. You know what? Hey, don't take this in a in a, in a wrong way. Um, you actually look better in a mask. How can I not <laughs> take that the wrong way? No, I'm just saying you wear masks. Well, well, I know not that. everyone wears masks well. Yeah, you know, you wear masks really, really well. And do you, you want to open show... up this video with that mask? Yeah. Well, do you want to also show everyone watching that you're really bald in real life? <laughs> that you, if you dare take off that hat, they'll see what you really look like. <sighs> Yeah. 
Yeah. I have no hair. I have no hair. It's all gone. Um, but that mask, you, you, you do look, you do look really good. It's a, it's a lovely mask. I'm, uh, it's up to you to tell them where. where that's from my. Yeah, that's actually from my. Uh, and um, we, for uh, the table placement, everyone was able to go to see like where they were uh, uh, being seated. They got a, they got a little masquerade mask like that. And uh, we all wore them during the, the dancing. Have, uh, you, uh, this is you dressing up as oh. your, your girl, you had a girlfriend character on the show for a while. Jane. Named Jane. Yeah, and this is you me. as Jane. And I gotta say something, I heard about this. Then I saw the picture and I thought, you look good. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I'm not kidding, you look you really hot. At, at, uh, at our rap party, um, one of our crew members, Tristan, I show up kind of early and I see him just eyeing me because they don't know we're dressing up as these characters. He's eyeing me, he's like fully, like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit on, I'm gonna hit on that girl. And I'm just looking at him, so shocked. I've never been looked at like. Didn't recognize you no, at all? No, no, he fully thought I was some, some, some girl at the party. So I just dramatically put my drink down and I slowly just start walking over to him, very sexually. And like, I'm gonna put out. And I come up to him and he starts turning bright red and I put my arms around him and I kiss him on the cheek. And I'm like, do never, never look at me like that again. <laughs> and then he knew, he knew it was a man, but he didn't know it was me. And I grab his face and I'm like, it's Aaron, man. What are you doing? <laughs> and then guys would look at you and go, and check you out. They yes. were like, up. Even after. After they knew. They were up and down. I was watching a guy. Look, Mark Johnson, Mark, our executive producer. I was going to say it. I didn't like, want to say it. I'm glad you did. I yes. can't believe how good you look. <laughs> And he's looking at you, and I'm like, and I go, you like that? Huh? And he goes, <laughs> you, ah. uh, but thank you so much for, for keeping it. Oh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful mask. Yeah. I've, I've robbed one bank with it already. You brought what? <laughs> one, just Good. one. Good. And, and now you're standing building the line. One bank makes you a bank robber. Yeah, that's actually true. Rob multiple banks. Yeah, that's true. That is a, that is a true statement. Um, what else? Oh, Love, was Francis Sweet Sixties oh, nice. fun to shoot? Love yes, you. it was. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen, all of you have seen Brian Cranston's Sweet 60th birthday party um, that he, he helped sort of, uh, he birthed the, the idea with uh, Jimmy Kimmel and uh, I was a small part of it, but um, it's a play on the, the, the spoiled 16 year old birthdays like the spoiled kids not getting the cards that they want. Um, but Brian is turning 60 and uh, he still lives, lives with his parents. And it's just, he's incredibly spoiled. Um, but it's a, it's, it's a beautiful little video. You should check it out. It's fun. It was, uh, that was Jimmy's idea. And, and we were happy to do it. Oh, was it? Oh, oh I, I, um, you know, that makes sense. Um, uh, I actually wore, I, I kept that lion costume. I, I, I wear a lion costume um, <laughs> and, uh, and, the, and the video because Brian dresses up, spoiler, he dress, dresses up as a lion um, and I show up at his birthday as a lion as well. And he, he kicks me out, he's pissed. Anyways, uh, they, they gave me that as like a, <laughs> a rap gift. And uh, I wore it um, on Halloween this last year. Looks like we have a lot of fans from the Middle East and Saudi Arabia and uh, Lebanon, hey everybody. Uh, Iraq and Iran. Oh, man. Cheers, cheers, cheers. I'd love to come visit your country when we get an opportunity. Um, I think that's it. We're, we don't want to bore people. Let's, let's yeah. Go. Let's get off. Um, All right, well, um, oh, look, Aaron, you make me smile. You know what? Thank you. You make me smile. Um, well, I see a lot of these questions are directed towards me. That's so nice. It's actually really nice to see. Yeah. Uh, oh, Argentina again. Oh, Mark Ryden. What's up, man? Oh, my favorite artist of all time. <laughs> He's on here. Hi. God, look, his work is all over my house. Mark, you remember this? 
Oh, you beautiful man. Look at how genius he is. My good God. Yeah, you've got a lot of his art around. Oh, I do have a lot of his art. Um, he's a talent. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a genius. Um, well, everyone, uh, we love you. Thanks for tuning in and uh, hearing our story of, of, of Dos Hombres. We're so excited to finally be able to, to share it with you all. And, and please stay safe, um, stay sane out there. Uh, we will get through this. Um, I know a lot of you uh, are, are very uncertain what, what's to come. And some of you are sick or have been sick or families have been sick or you have had people that you have lost. Um, it's just, it, I don't even know how to wrap my head around all of this madness, but um, it's all about just trying to, you know, Human stay together, stand together. Very resilient. We will get through this and, and we are social beings. And so hopefully you've appreciated this moment of just kind of having a little fun and rapping today. Um, we have, we've, we've had fun doing this. Thank you, stay safe, um, be well, and uh, we'll talk to you again very soon. Yeah. Well, cheers everyone, lots of love. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.